The Google Pixel 6 is set to launch with the very first chipset engineered by Google with Samsung, the Google Tensor chipset. But I think that for some people, it's going to be a big disappointment. For others, it's not. And we're gonna jump into that today. My name is Mitchell. I'm fluent in tech, so you don't have to be. Today's video is dedicated to one of my good friends that just died. I'm gonna keep it together for you guys as best as I can. If you like the content you see here, smash the like button. If you wanna stick around and see more of it, hit subscribe. So we have some specs of the Google Pixel 6 and Google 6, Pixel 6 Pro, including a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, 120 hertz refresh rate, 50 megapixel main camera, 4X telephoto zoom, ultra wide camera, and of course, that awesome Google engineered software experience. But if we take a step back, we look at the history of Google devices and we look at where Google tries to really impress people, it's never with the sheer computational performance. It's never with the gaming performance. And really, Google's aim with the Pixel line of devices has always been to make you need to interface with your phone less, which is why while a lot of other people think that the Tensor chipset is going to be a earth-shattering performance monster, I really don't think it is. When we talk about mobile performance, there's two things that really come into play, the software and the hardware. And really, how the software is made to interface and how the hardware is made to interface with the software and the meshing of these two things is ultimately what defines and what makes or breaks a user mobile experience. And Google has always tried to give features and improvements that make the user experience of Pixel devices as least in as less as least involved as possible because they want you to use your phone and actually touch your phone less. This has been evident with things like the Sully, Project Sully, and being able to use air gestures to change things on your phone. This can be seen with things like Google Assistant becoming smarter, more powerful, more capable, and able to do more things without physically interfacing with your phone. And ultimately, Google's history of hardware has been giving us the least amount of hardware and getting the most out of it. That means six gigabytes of RAM in some cases. This means UFS 2.1 or UFS 2.2 storage in other cases. This means non-massive batteries. And ultimately, it's been Google's software approach that has been trying to get the most out of it. The same way that on paper an iPhone doesn't have a ton of RAM. It doesn't have a huge battery. But Apple is able to integrate from the top down to give users a uncompromising awesome user experience, which ultimately has led Apple to making some of the best devices in the world, not because of their hardware, but because of their integrated user experience with hardware and software. And what does this mean exactly for Pixel? Well, it means that Google is going to be pu putting a bigger emphasis on AI, on machine learning, on neural cores, and on distributing the load from those high performance cores onto the lower performance cores so that you don't have to use those high performance cores as often and thus get you better battery life, better efficiency, and overall better thermals. I think that for gaming, the Google Pixel 6 is actually more likely than not going to be a very mediocre device. I think that for pure benchmark scores, it might benchmark pretty well, but don't look for it to be the best benchmarking device. Where I think Google really wants to get the most out of their hardware is doing things like offloading uh, less intensive applications onto the lower power cores to save energy, standby battery life, and then doing all of the AI stuff on like neural engines and enhanced neural engines. And that's before we even talk about the camera. Now in the past, Google has used custom image signal pipelines to go ahead and give users that pixel experience with the camera. And doing a custom made chipset means that they're gonna be able to go from the front to the back, meaning more likely than not, I'm gonna guess that this 50 megapixel sensor is gonna be a Samsung sensor and all of the hardware 
from that sensor down to the SOC is gonna be designed and implemented from Google with the help of Samsung, which means that we're gonna be able to see things like 4K60 across all of the devices with HDR video and electronic image stabilization combined with optical image stabilization. I think that we're going to see HDR video take a massive jump with Google's ability to recognize scenes and then boost parts of the scene to go ahead and give us a more visually pleasing image. Kind of the same way that Apple does it because Apple controls the entire image signaling pipeline. Now, if you think that Gcam from the new Pixels is just gonna be ported and it's gonna work fine for your current Android device, I definitely think that that's not going to be the case simply based on the fact that Google is gonna have so much control over the hardware that the software used to make that work is not going to be plug and play. Sure, we might be able to port certain aspects of Gcam to non-Google devices, but it's not gonna be the same way it was in the past, like with the Poco F1 that utilized the same uh, SOC, utilized the same imaging sensor, and for us to port Gcam to the Poco F1 resulted in like a seamless, fast, amazing user experience. I want to know what you guys think about this. And I also wanted to dedicate this video to my good friend that passed away, Freddie. Rest in peace. And uh, I hope one day you and I can play basketball uh, again.